My name is Thor Nelson, Bemidji State Ducks Unlimited Chapter President. I'm a junior here at Bemidji State University, majoring in mass communications, minoring in environmental studies. Uh, and I'm originally from Nicollet, Minnesota. Nicollet is a small town down in southern Minnesota. Um, closest large town is Mankato. I grew up on the shores of Swan Lake. Swan Lake is a 10,000 acre prairie pothole. It's the largest prairie pothole in North America. So I was spoiled with water fouling at a very young age. That is pretty much how my origins started with the love for the game. Um, shooting a lot of puddlers and a lot of Canada geese, mostly hunting water. And I, yeah, I grew up hunting water more so than fields. Coming to college though, I've kind of made more of a transition to kind of doing more 50-50, I guess you could say. Um, and definitely doing a lot more big water hunting since I've come to college as well. I'm Ryan Donnell. I'm a wildlife bio major here at Bemidji State. Yeah, I'm Brody Holm, and I'm a fiat and health teacher, a future fiat and health teacher at BSU here. And we grew up together in the same hometown in Grand Rapids, about an hour and 15 minutes east of here. So we've been hunting a lot of the same lakes for nearly six years now. This is our sixth season hunting together. Um, so I guess that started sophomore year of high school when I got my driver's license and hauled up the little Ford Ranger all over the place doing whatever we could to get some ducks I guess. I mean when we first started out we were running a pretty simple rig. We were using our dad's equipment and we you know little sophomores in high school we kind of had to get stuff where we you know where we could so we were running a little 14 foot boat with an old two stroke smoky two stroke motor and maybe three or four dozen decoys and Sometimes the motor would start, sometimes it wouldn't. Paddle out, you know, make do. Bemidji State University is a really cool spot to be a waterfowler. You have a really wide range of, you know, different habitats that you can hunt for waterfowling opportunities. From the really big water to the east, like Lake Winnebogashish and Leech Lake, where you're hunting for big water divers to the fields to the west where you can really hunt some dry field mallards, Canada geese and puddlers. You can really do just about anything you want. There's not a whole lot of schools in the nation where you can get a well-rounded um, opportunity like that. So I am truly blessed to be going to school here. And I gotta give the credit where the credit's due. Wouldn't have loved uh, diver hunting so much if it wasn't for my two roommates, uh, Brody and Jerry. They really switched me over to the diver side because I used to be just a straight puddler guy, straight goose guy. So they really did the, did the work on me. But um, yeah, and when Bemidji State says it's your best decision ever to come here, that is the truth. And uh, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Growing up in Grand Rapids, like for the most part, it was like a little bit less typical of hunting than a lot of people are used to. Less fields for sure, like more wild rice in that area. So lots of birds would relate to the rice and it was definitely a little bit different than coming over here to BSU, even like it's only an hour away. There's definitely some more field opportunities to be had and definitely a, like a lot more to learn, but we still like to stick to our roots a little bit and go on, hit the big water and hunt some divers. Definitely enjoyed our time here at Bemidji. You've met some good guys, good hunting partners. Yeah, I met some different perspectives anyways, for sure. Like when you're growing up in your own little isolated area, all you know is kind of like a small little part of your world and you know how to hunt that a little bit and it's cool that we are able to still hunt some of the same areas we grew up hunting but like definitely meeting people like Thor and meeting people like Wyatt from different areas of the state and some people that we've hunted with that are even like out of staters and they have a completely new perspective on hunting and I guess even just life in general so it's definitely interesting doing that. No Brody makes a good point before freshman and more so sophomore year didn't really know a whole lot about field hunting geese like some general knowledge but didn't do enough of it where we had the experience to be successful so i definitely appreciate uh, that experience my name is scott anderson i'm the senior senior regional director for ducks unlimited in northern minnesota um, i actually have the pleasure of working with all the volunteers that uh, host fundraising events for ducks unlimited uh, including the bemidji state chapter uh, Basically, what the involvement is, is that I, I work with the chapters, the local volunteers, the students that help uh, do that fundraising by working with them, getting uh, merchandise, planning the event, uh, how to fundraise, ways to do it right and, and make the best of the night. Um, we work uh, from the start to the finish uh, as planning just in ticket sales and what raffles we want to run, what kind of product we want, what kind of guns we want. Of course, that's what the main thing at DU events are. With the Bemidji State Ducks Unlimited chapter, it's the oldest in the state and actually one of the oldest in the country. It started back in 1989. Uh, the challenge with the college chapters is that obviously we're losing volunteers every single year from graduation. So uh, the chapters 
uh, did disappear for a couple years off and on, but we restarted it back in uh, 2016. And since then it's been going strong. How I got involved with Ducks Unlimited, my freshman year, the only thing I did was I went to the banquet. I didn't go to a single meeting, wasn't involved one bit. Sophomore year, I filled out a online poll, not an online poll, an online like uh, ad actually on Instagram, um, just volunteering for the men's chapter. The regional coordinator for Northern Minnesota, Scott Anderson, reached out to me then after that and asked if I wanted to get involved in the student chapter on campus and I was all in. Basically, I walked into a presidential role right there because the club was going to collapse if nobody joined and I was the only person that showed interest. So uh, yeah, I kind of walked into a presidency role um, and I've been doing that now. This is my second year being a president um, and we do a lot of fun stuff build wood duck houses. Um, we do on uh, group duck hunts. We go ice fishing a lot since it does freeze up up here and it is iced over for most of the year. Um, just a lot of fun group activities and kind of make it a little community if you know what I mean. Um, with this chapter, they were one of the top in the nation last year in 2019, uh, mainly because of a couple of really big events that we held this last uh, February. Uh, we had the crew from Meat Eater come in and they, they did an event with us, uh, had a great time. We had over 500 people at that event uh, listening to what uh, the experiences were the, that group. Um, the kids worked really hard on that. Most of them were all brand new this year and uh, they busted their butts to make it happen. Uh, it's really important to get these young kids involved. Um, it's kind of the, you talk about the future generations of uh, waterfall hunting and you're picking up people at a prime time in their life where they can make a difference now and they're going to graduate and immediately get out and be able to make more of a difference as well too once they start getting involved in, in, the, in the real world out there with jobs and careers and the communities they, they're going to move to. So advice for incoming freshmen, um, get involved with uh, on-campus organizations, the different clubs and organizations on campus, uh, especially Ducks Unlimited. You know, I'll still be around so you can come any of the meetings that you want to come to. Um, but be sure to hunt with other people. Hunt with a lot of different people. Put on miles, you know. Don't be afraid to go try something different. Um, and don't be afraid to hunt with somebody different. Uh, and definitely, if I were to give you one piece of advice, I would do the duck hunting schedule your first semester freshman year. Don't have any classes until afternoon or after one o'clock in the afternoon so you can hunt every morning. Uh, your schedule is gonna be the most flexible your first semester freshman year. Take advantage of that and take afternoon classes because you're gonna wanna be hunting every morning. Uh, you know, getting involved with organizations like Ducks Unlimited on your campus, I, I would say is a really important aspect. Um, it's gonna teach you a lot of good uh, life lessons. You're gonna make friends in the community, uh, make friends in your chapter. You're gonna learn from other hunters. Uh, it's a great resume builder. I mean, you're, you're giving up volunteer time on your, on your own dime to come and help for a good cause that a lot of businesses are gonna look at and see as a very important aspect. Um, you're gonna learn a lot of different aspects of how to run essentially a business. I mean, there's treasurers or secretaries, president, co-president, um, positions within these chapters that, that will help you learn what you're going to learn, need to know coming into a future uh, career with a, with a company that you might work with. Yeah. And if anyone's interested at all, I mean, you can certainly, it's a good thing to get involved with your local chapter at a university, or you can even start your own. Uh, all these chapters didn't exist at one time and someone on the campus decided to get something rolling. So if you're interested at all, and I really encourage you to at least look into it, you can go to ducks.org. Um, and you can just look up university chapters there or just uh, submit your information online at ducks.org and uh, we'll get you connected with a local person that can help you start a chapter at your local university. Most memorable duck hunt was freshman year, November 7th. It was just me and Ryan out on a lake that uh, shall remain nameless, but I'm sure a lot of people know which one it is. Anyway, uh, foggy morning um, and we had our eyes set on a golden eye or just any golden eye right away. I had never even got a chance to shoot at one, let alone see one in flight in my life before uh, coming to Bemidji State. So it was kind of something that's always eluded me and kind of been like this, you know, ghost flying around in the sky that a guy never gets to see. Um, but it was a foggy morning and I remember Ryan telling me that their wings whistle and especially when it gets the colder out, uh, the colder it gets, the louder the whistle gets. So it was foggy out and I remember that was the first thing that I could hear was that just that whistle of the wings flying in and that big B-52, he came out of the fog and I think it took us five shells to finish him off finally. And you know, he was at probably 20 yards when we capped him and then we had, you know, double and triple tap him on the water too. Um, I didn't believe that they were that tough of birds, but I mean, my gosh, did they ever put up a fight? 
Um, and that was the biggest golden eye that I ever shot to date. It was a stud drake, not quite good enough for the wall, but good enough for a mental mount. And uh, yeah, that was definitely probably one of my most memorable hunts here at BSU so far. This weekend was definitely a little difficult. Like it was kind of like right away we started off with like a really good hunt. And like that was one of, I think we could both agree, one of the best late season diver hunts we've ever been on, if not the best. By far the best. It was and awesome. So it was really like, really had high expectations going into the next two days. But I think definitely we switched a couple things from the game plan and what we know a little bit. And right. that didn't pay off for us very well. Kind of went against our intuition like yesterday for example hunted the opposite side from when the wind was coming from and it was supposed to be calm that day but on a big lake like leech you can't really mess around with that and you gotta play it safe so i think that uh kind of bit us in the ass there and then didn't go on today's hunt but brody could expand on that yeah and today's hunt was another you know we'd never really been out to this spot and i think we got used to this year before the the crew came up here i mean we got used to trying new things and it would just pan out for us and we've had like such this good year that you just kind of expect like you know if there's birds around things are going to go right and a combination of there not being birds around plus weird setups just made the next two days after the first hunt really really interesting so didn't really work out for us in that way and I kind of feel like the first day gave us such confidence that we could go and try whatever and mm -hmm. that there was, seemed like there was enough like golden eyes around where we could do good hunting those spots, yeah. but might still be a little early. Yeah, for sure. And we were, we were saying it's probably maybe an eighth of the birds that are actually going to hit leech in the next few weeks. So hopefully it'll only get better for us. And we were pretty confident the fact that we were able to kill 23 birds in a hunt with the numbers of birds we saw that we were able to pull that with our spread and our spot was good enough. And I think the next two days kind of reflected on how many birds were actually in the area and how many, you know, how good of a hunt that we could have actually had like on a normal time. So fresh birds plus a good spot, plus a little bit of luck panned out for us the first day. Um, so this weekend having the campus waterfowl guys come and film for us and film us hunting has just truly been a blessing just because you don't really get that many opportunities of having dudes with professional cameras sit back and film you hunt, especially when you're not a professional hunter. You're just an average Joe college kid uh, doing what other guys do all around the country. And you get a chance to share your story about how you waterfowl and how you're a little bit different than the next guy. Um, and it's something that after, I mean, after we recorded our first hunt, we were just like, wow, we are going to be able to sit back, watch this all off season long and show this to our kids grandkids, you know, anybody that we want to in our lives, uh, something that is just truly going to be, it's there forever. Um, really, really cool opportunity and can't, can't say thank you enough to the guys for coming and doing this because it is absolutely awesome what they're doing with the campus waterfowl tour. Um, just, yeah, keep it up and thank you so much. Yeah. Is that good? Sweet.